Hi, welcome to this week's episode of Over 50 and Flourishing. It is a repeat guest on today's show, but new subject matter. Testosterone for women has been largely talked about as of late, but it's also a controversial subject. And you know me, I like to get to the heart of the matter and have open and honest conversations about things so that we can all come from a place of knowledge, which leads to a place of empowerment. I think the more you know about something, the better educated you are, I am, the better we are enabled to make decisions on our behalf when it comes to our own health. So I wanted to bring back Dr. Susan today from the Complete Midlife Wellness Care Center. And she's, we've talked about estrogen, HRT, we've talked about sexual wellness in midlife. So today's episode is dedicated fully to testosterone replacement in women, what it is, what are the side effects of not having enough testosterone in our bodies, how much is too much, who's a candidate, and what's available. So please welcome Dr. Susan. Y'all know I just love me some honey love bras and shapewear. Well, that's my game right now. It's important to be able to feel comfortable in what you're wearing, to have that kind of support or shapewear that you need for that special occasion dress. But Honey Love is so much more than just bras and shapewear. They have incredibly comfortable shapewear, tanks, leggings, you name it for everyday support. Also, you can pair your V-neck bra with their breathable and versatile leggings or get the matching shapewear to pair with your crossover bra. Mix, match, but the point is be comfortable while you're doing it. Treat yourself to the best bras on the market and save 20% off honeylove.com slash over 50. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off honeylove.com slash over 50. After your purchase, they're going to ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show. Tell them we sent you. Honeys, you deserve it. Hey guys, you've heard me talk about Bond Charge. They're a holistic wellness brand and they have a huge range of products to help you in your life in every single way. Founded on science and inspired by nature, their extensive products help you sleep better, perform better, have more energy, recover, balance hormones, reduce inflammation, the list goes on and on. I've been using their red light face mask pretty much to help with fine lines and wrinkles. I really like the collagen boost that it helps to produce, but it can also help with sore jaw, eczema, migraines, acne, the list goes on and on. And let me tell you, Bond Charge products are all HSA, FSA eligible, giving you tax-free savings of up to 40%. Go to bondcharge.com slash over 50 and use coupon code over 50 to save 15%. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E dot com slash over 50 and use coupon code over 50 to save 15%. Oh, how I love me some Jenny Kane. Boy, you talk about classic timeless pieces. Perfect for the summer, effortless chic, especially for travel to be able to pack, wear on your trip. I just think it's a no-brainer. California brand, easy breezy. Their quintessential sweaters are must-have items. I love the new cotton collection, their foster sweater. Cameron Crew Neck, they're perfect everyday pieces. And they've got an incredible rewards program where you can earn up to 10% back with every purchase and joining is free. Hey, you can find your new uniform at JennyKane.com. Our listeners get 15% off your first order when you use code Dominique15 at checkout. That's 15% off your first order, J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E.com, promo code Dominique15. Let getting dressed be one less thing you worry about. Hi, Susan. Always great to have you with me. Kind of surreal in a way, because normally we are sitting side by side in my living room and now I'm in DFW and you're in Houston. So I know I no. miss you so much, but I do feel like I'm sitting with you in your living room and I'm sitting yeah. here in mine. So we can just make it like we're sitting right next to each other. We will. We'll just pretend like we're having a glass of wine together and talking about hormones, which I love and I know my audience does. And we have focused so much in the past on estrogen. And I think a lot of women, you know, when it comes to hormone replacement, that's where everybody's mind goes because we lose estrogen and all the symptoms that we experience are from estrogen loss. But one thing that really needs attention and enough so that we're going to dedicate an entire podcast to it is the big T testosterone. And, yeah. it, and I say it's big because it is big and I'm going to have you explain why it's so important in a woman's body, especially in this stage of our lives. Yeah. Thank you so much for inviting this conversation. It's curious to me why there's still some 
controversy about it and why mm. people still are confused about the fact that testosterone is not just a male hormone. I can tell you this in med school, we learned zero about this. And you and I have talked about this before, just okay. the lack of education that doctors get. So no judgment if your doctor doesn't know this, because I didn't know it either. Like we're literally not taught about hormones. In as much as we are taught about hormones, maybe if we're lucky, we learn a little bit about estrogen mm -hmm. and maybe a tiny bit about progesterone. But testosterone's just never mentioned, which is really ironic because this yeah. is a fun fact. Mm -hmm. We make way more testosterone as women throughout our lives than estrogen. And when I heard that the first time, I'm like, wait a minute, what? That can't be right? Right. Yeah. It's what? But it's true. And it's so curious that it's just been ignored for all of these years. I totally support if I God said I could only take one hormone, I would take estrogen. And that's really important because you know, many of the symptoms of menopause that we notice that are the most, I don't know, it's hard to put them in order. They're all so awful, right? But what they right. can be. Hot flashes, night sweats, vaginal dryness. Yes, uh, almost 100% related to estrogen, bone loss, mm -hmm. Alzheimer's, heart disease, all the things that you and your other guests have talked about so very well. So let's not forget about that. Right. Or progesterone. But let's talk about testosterone too. So I'm not saying it's more important. I'm not saying everybody should take it. I'm not saying any of those things. I just would love to just enhance this understanding of the fact mm -hmm. that yes, we've made it our whole lives. And not only does estrogen disappear and progesterone disappears, but testosterone does too. So let's not forget about that. And it has another whole host of symptoms that it causes. Mm -hmm. And let's just you know, look at the whole picture because that's what we're yeah. doing here, right? Well, it is. And I, what I love about podcasts and, and it's why you, you know, do what you do and, and why you're with me so much is the ability to inform. And when you provide information, you allow women to then advocate for themselves and to go to a doctor's office from a place of knowledge, from a place of being able to ask questions. And like you said, it may not be for everybody, but you don't know until you ask and you get that conversation started. So I'm grateful for that. And I, I kind of want to scale it back. Let's kind of get back to the bare bones here. Um, you mentioned that we make more testosterone than estrogen early on. What happens just like we lose estrogen in midlife, what's going on with testosterone and is it happening at the same time that we're losing estrogen? And then what are those loss of uh, hormone symptoms during this time? Yeah, that's a whole great group of questions. Yay. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can do justice to how good those questions were. Oh, well. I'm just gonna, let's just back up back to when yeah. we were 12 or so, right? When we started having periods, we started making estradiol, mm -hmm. progesterone, and testosterone from our ovaries. Now we've got lots of other hormones. I don't want to ignore those, but just in the, in the scope of what we talk about with menopause, those are the three hormones that we're talking about. And there are three, not just two. We make all three of those throughout our lives while mm -hmm. we're younger and fertile. And then all three of them decline in our forties, but not all at the same time. And so it's mm -hmm. really interesting. Like I was given this idea. I don't even remember if we actually talked about it in med school okay. or more. It was just kind of assumed that you have all these hormones and then one day they disappear and right. that's menopause and that end of story. Okay. Move on to the next class. Literally that was it. Right. Well, it's not quite that simple. What actually happens is those three hormones do all decline in our forties or earlier for some women mm -hmm. to the point of zero or very close to it, but not at the same time. So for example, very commonly, and this was my case in our mid forties, we might have a testosterone of zero, like literally undetectable mm -hmm. while we still are making estrogen and progesterone. So for example, we might still be having periods, but we're kind of feeling wonky. It's not quite right. Like my sex drive is gone. That's a really common mm -hmm. symptom of testosterone being very low or zero, like in my case. And you yeah. and I have talked about that before. Yeah. Another one, oh my gosh, I'm losing muscle mass. I'm still doing the same exercise, but my arms are getting flabby. And then if we do a body composition, I'm losing muscle. Like I can see mm -hmm. it depleting. And then I'm just weak. Like I remember clearly one day I was trying to carry the box of Christmas ornaments up to the attic like you do in January. And I'm like, yeah. oh, help, I can't do it. I'm, I'm like a weak mm -hmm. old lady. I just felt like, Jesus, come to this. I'm like, I need a man to help me carry a gosh darn box. So <laughs> it's your feeling of weakness, losing yeah. muscle, losing sex drive. Those are how we might feel. Mm -hmm. 
Now, not everybody feels that way, but I can tell you a lot of women do. And um, on the list of symptoms that we have in my office, those are very close to the top. Like, oh yeah, check, check, check. Mm -hmm. I have all of those. So, so important to talk about getting rid of the other symptoms like hot flashes, night sweats, insomnia. Let's do that by all means. But you can do all that and still, this happened to me. I'm like, okay, great. My hot flashes are gone. I'm sleeping better. Whew, mm -hmm. That's great. But I got no sex drive. I'm still losing muscle. There was something missing, but just something. And I can tell you what happened when I personally decided to take testosterone in the appropriate dose for women. That is the most important sentence I'll say this whole time. It has to be the right dose for women. Yep. A couple of weeks. Oh, my sex drive's better. I have more energy. Um, I'm 56 now. In the past mm, six, seven years, I've gained seven pounds of muscle. Now, mm -hmm. I did lift weights and eat protein, but that wouldn't have happened without the testosterone, I'm absolutely sure. So it's sure. part of the more holistic picture. Yeah. So yeah, it's um, not, it needs to be considered, I think. And then you can choose, like all things. You may not choose to do any of this. It's just a choice. But if you're having those symptoms, hmm, maybe worth looking into, is my testosterone zero? Would replacing it possibly be helpful? It's an experiment with very good studies that have been done showing that it works better than placebo. So you've got a lot of scientific backing behind you if you did choose to make that decision. Maybe you'll feel better like me and most of my patients. So yeah, it's curious. And um, mm -hmm. just speaking to what you mentioned about this this. Uh, little cool fun fact that we make more testosterone than estrogen. If you look at the number on a piece of paper, so say your doctor draws your blood and I'm just going to say maybe you're 45 and your estradiol on that particular day of the month is a hundred and your testosterone is 20. I'm just making up a number. Mm -hmm. The units of measurement are different such that to make it apples to apples, you have to multiply the testosterone by 10. So now your testosterone is actually 200 mm -hmm. and your estradiol is 100, if you see what I mean. And that could fluctuate wildly during the cycle so that at certain mm -hmm. times your testosterone is actually 10 times higher. But just to say overall, if you add it all up, we make more testosterone than estradiol just because the units of measurement are different. Curious, right? It's Very. just those things that 1% of doctors know. And so you know more than your mostly doctors now. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. And I'm a gynecologist, for goodness sake. I didn't know that till five years ago. Yeah. I, you know, it's fascinating to me. It seems like this talk and these conversations are relatively recent, which I find to be a crying shame because for all of these generations, you know, we've all been going through midlife and it, it seems like now we are finally starting to get the attention, the focus, and at least shown the potential treatment options out there for everybody. And to your point, it's like what you're saying, not everything is for everybody and it has to be carefully measured. And it's a, it's a personal decision between a patient and a doctor, but it seems like the testosterone component to HRT is a very new conversation. Why yes. do you think that is? So curious. I have uh, my own speculations and I can throw them out here. I certainly am not saying they're right. Um, sexism, that's one. Uh, let me tell you, this is a fact. Think about this. Men lose about 50% of their testosterone on average between say 30 years old and 50 years old. So let's just imagine an imaginary healthy guy. Maybe his testosterone is a thousand when he's 25 to 30. And now mm -hmm. he's 50 and it's 500. So it's dropped by 50%, but it's still 500. Well, he's going to be running to the T clinic and nobody's <laughs> going to think there's anything wrong with that. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that either. I mm -hmm. mean, by all means, go do that because you know what? He's going to be complaining of low sex drive, low energy, low energy. loss of muscle, right. getting fat around the middle, mm -hmm. feeling weaker. And my answer to that is me too. But the difference is your testosterone is 500 and mine is zero. Yeah. So I, I sometimes, I've had sometimes, oh, frequently, I'll have a husband or partner come in with their wife and they're like, Dr. Susan, what's wrong with my wife? Like, they're just confused. Like, what is wrong with, uh, she's mm -hmm. changed, she's different. And one of the things I might say is, okay, imagine if I cut your testicles off, 
because that's been done, right? There's a lot of history with Unix and things in the past, awful things that were done to cast straight men. We know what happens when we cut their testicles off. All that stuff I just said. Heck no, <laughs> that would be terrible. And I'm like, mm hmm. So that's, she's sitting right there. That's how she feels with no testosterone. So it's mm -hmm. so interesting that for men, replacing testosterone is like, heck yeah, of course, go for it and right. good, good on you. And for women, it's like, wait a minute, that's weird and strange. And why would you do that? It's a, it's sexist. I'll just say that's the reason. Beca and because of the sexism, people have not become educated. It's simply a lack of education based, like many things in sexism, mm -hmm. we weren't given the attention that men were, et cetera. Well, and there's that. And there are also um, interesting stereotypes that if you do testosterone replacement, you're somehow going to look like a guy. And we're right. going to we're going to take a quick commercial break and we're going to have you dispel that myth on the backside of this break on over 50 and flourishing. Y'all know I just love me some honey love bras and shapewear. Well, that's my game right now. It's important to be able to feel comfortable in what you're wearing, to have that kind of support or shapewear that you need for that special occasion dress. Honey love is seamless. It's comfortable. It is honestly, it's underwear that you don't even feel like is there. They have just revolutionized the bra game so you can say goodbye to the underwire without sacrificing the lift. And you're going to love the crossover bra. It's so comfortable. It's the new go-to, gives all the support you need. But Honey Love is so much more than just bras and shapewear. They have incredibly comfortable shapewear, tanks, leggings, you name it for everyday support. Also, you can pair your V-neck bra with their breathable and versatile leggings or get the matching shape to pair with your crossover bra. Mix, match, but the point is be comfortable while you're doing it. Treat yourself to the best bras on the market and save 20% off honeylove.com slash over 50. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off honeylove.com slash over 50. After your purchase, they're going to ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show. Tell them we sent you. Honeys, you deserve it. Hey guys, you've heard me talk about Bond Charge. They're a holistic wellness brand and they have a huge range of products to help you in your life in every single way. Founded on science and inspired by nature, their extensive products help you sleep better, perform better, have more energy, recover, balance hormones, reduce inflammation, the list goes on and on. I've been using their red light face mask pretty much to help with fine lines and wrinkles. I really like the collagen boost that it helps to produce, but it can also help with sore jaw, eczema, migraines, acne, the list goes on and on. Found them, wanted to give it a try. A lot of people have been asking me, have you tried the red light face mask? And so I decided to give it a go. 10 to 20 minutes each day, so simple to use. You can just put it on while you're doing anything around the house but it really, really seems to help. I can feel a difference. It's lightweight, it's easy. And let me tell you, Bond Charge products are all HSA, FSA eligible, giving you tax-free savings of up to 40%. Go to bondcharge.com slash over 50 and use coupon code over 50 to save 15%. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E.com slash over 50 and use coupon code over 50 to save 15%. With me today is my dear friend and guest, Dr. Susan with Complete Women's Midlife Care. Susan, you are really one of those women, like many OB-GYNs, who said enough is enough when it came to a lack of care for women in midlife, and you opened your own practice, and you've been really researching and doing a lot of work when it comes to hormone therapies, replacements, alternatives for women in midlife, and just having open and honest conversations about what's going on with our hormones, with with our sexuality. And I, I really appreciate your honesty and your willingness to talk about this and educate. You empower women by doing so. And like we've been saying, you enable them to be their own best health advocate. So thank you for that. Well, I'm just so grateful to have a platform to do so because we cannot possibly ask for what we need unless we know what's accurate information, right? And then we yeah. take that and we do what we want with it, but we have to start with knowledge. Knowledge is power, education's power. So yeah, exactly. 
Yes. And so today we are talking testosterone. We have done episodes on, you know, HRT, but primarily focusing on the estrogen side of things. We have done a podcast on women's sexual health and wellness. And this is an interesting one because there really hasn't been dedicated content to, at least on my platform, to just testosterone replacement. And we've been talking about kind of the backstory on what happens in the body. And you talked about when women start losing it, what those symptoms are. And there's this funny preconceived notion. It's like, you know, if women think they go to the gym and they hit weights really, really hard, they're like, I don't want to bulk up. I don't, I don't want to bulk up. I don't want to look like a guy. Not going and to. unless you're taking something, you know, <laughs> exponentially stronger than you should, you yes. won't look like a guy. And I think maybe a hesitation or reservation with testosterone replacement therapy is that somehow they're going to lose their femininity. So yes. let's talk about, and I, and I think also there's misconception about dosing Absolutely. when it comes to testosterone replacement. So let's kind of get into that aspect of it and how that works and what it does for a woman if dosed properly. Yes. Great questions. So for sure, if I gave you, or if I took enough testosterone, I could turn into someone who looked very masculine. And that might be something that a transgender person might do on purpose, right? So we have a lot of experience with this in circles where that would be wanted. Now for someone like me, that's not what is wanted. Hormone replacement, mm -hmm. I like the word replacement. We're simply mm -hmm. replacing what was there before. And if we follow this line of conversation, which is just factually true, that we've had testosterone in our bodies all of our lives, mm -hmm. when we felt great, when we had the most energy, the most muscle mass, the best sex drive, the best bone density, we had the highest testosterone. Did we look like men? No, we just mm -hmm. look like young, healthy women because the level of testosterone we had was appropriate for a woman. Now, I mentioned, for example, this hypothetical man in our little story we were telling might have a testosterone of a thousand. Mm -hmm. We don't want a testosterone of a thousand. Of course not. So the, the level that we want to achieve is similar, in my opinion, to what I had when I felt my best, not what a man would have. Of course not. Now, mm -hmm. part of this is such an interesting story with testosterone because this is one of the most crazy things ever. And you may or may not know that testosterone is a controlled substance. The FDA has put it in the bucket of controlled substances like narcotics or other dangerous, <laughs> addictive things. And that is because it was misused in the professional sporting world. Yeah, well, and yes, that, and bodybuilding and whatnot. We've heard all right. the stories. Yes, because if you misuse it, and, and let's just say if you misuse anything, you can get into trouble, right? Sure. You can drink too much alcohol. You can eat too much sugar. You can take too much anything. And that's certainly not good. You could do that with just about anything. So if testosterone is abused, it's performance enhancing, mm -hmm. right? And so, so it is now tested for in the Olympics and other such uh, high level athletic events, yeah. because if women take a lot of testosterone, they are physically stronger and better, and that's not fair and that's not allowed. Well, so yes, we don't want to give that much. Right. <laughs> and it's been abused in the bodybuilding community for mm -hmm. years. And then, you know, athletes used it and so on. And it, all it, of that and it also has very dangerous implications when it is right. abused too. Of course. Okay. So yes, we don't want to give, look, we don't want to give too much of anything. If I gave someone too much estrogen, that would be very dangerous as well. We, we don't yes. want to do that or any kind of too much of anything. But yes, if, if somebody gives a woman too much testosterone, very unpleasant and not good side effects can happen that are masculinizing, like uh, the least of which are oily skin, acne, but now clitoral enlargement, loss mm -hmm. of hair in a male pattern, growth of hair in a male pattern, mm -hmm. uh, deepening of the voice, even growing of an Adam's apple. These are things that a transgender person might want, right? But other you know, women don't. And so, of course, we've got experience with what happens with too much testosterone. Absolutely. We do not want to do that. Again, the idea is simply, let me just say it's not even an idea. I'm just throwing out the consideration that if we are considering hormone replacement, why on earth are we only considering two thirds of it? Mm -hmm. Not all of it. Because my goal for my own body and for my patients is to simulate as much as we can what was there before when we felt the best to achieve the best wellness, the best 
lifespan, the best, best health span and all of those things. And without testosterone, I do truly believe that we're missing out on just a little bit. It's just maybe 10%, but it's not zero. So if we want yeah. to feel our optimal, it's something to just think about. Right. And so at our age, because you and I are the same age at, at 56. Mm -hmm. So at our age, our bodies are basically producing zero testosterone. Is that right? Like little to nothing. Yeah, so pretty much now mine's zero, um, and, and mo many of my patients are zero. So if you drew my blood and I wasn't mm -hmm. taking anything, I would have zero of all three of those hormones: estradiol, progesterone, testosterone. Now it is true that some women make a teeny bit of testosterone either from their ovaries or also from our adrenal glands that are right close to our kidneys, but very very small amounts, if any. So yeah, essentially zero, or m might as well be zero for all right. intents and purposes. Yeah. And then when you supplement, and we'll talk about the different forms of uh, using testosterone and how it can be administered, but when you do it, what are your optimal levels that you're trying to help a patient reach? Yeah. So th this is a good question. And I, I'm just going to say that a lot of people might have a different opinion. So I'm going to tell you mine. Going back to trying to replace what it was when I felt my best if you're looking at the number on the piece of paper, and let's just say the units of estradiol are, this is TMI, but they're picograms per milliliter compared to nanograms per deciliter or whatever, but let's just look at that number. So your ideal number for testosterone, in my opinion, might be somewhere between 50 and 100. Mm -hmm. Now, in the community, and I do not think this is a good idea, uh, it's quite common for certain places to recommend it to be 200 or 300, or I've mm -hmm. had patients that were 600 or 800 wow. and they will feel good for a short while. They'll have a ton of energy, great sex drive, and, and that's fine. But then they'll develop potentially a lot of unpleasant side effects because that is not a testosterone level. That is what our bodies were made to live with. So if we're, if we're mm -hmm. in the camp, which I am, that believes that hormone replacement is putting back what was lost, we want to stick somewhere in that range. Now, keep in mind also throughout our lives, our hormone levels fluctuate. Like when we were having periods, they went up and sure. down. So it's not always going to be exactly the same one day to the next, whatever product you use, it'll be a little higher some days, a little lower some days. And that is just what's been happening all your life. But hanging around in that range, I checked mine last week and it was 80 and I feel fantastic. Mm -hmm. In the past, I've, I've done an experiment on myself. This is how it works, right? I've had mine higher and I also felt fantastic, but it doesn't need to be higher to be, feel fantastic. So I think a very uh, wise approach to anything in medicine is to take the dose that works, that's the lowest dose, right? Mm -hmm. And um, if it's an appropriate dose, why take more? Because more isn't better. In fact, more can get you into trouble in right. lots of ways, right? Right, right. With everything yeah, you can experience hair loss, like you mentioned, and, <laughs> right. and these unwanted side effects just by being a bit more. Right. And it's, yeah. I get it. It's like, I mean, I, I sort of feel where that comes from because it's like, oh, it feels so good. A little more, mm -hmm. we feel better. And now I'm sounding like it's cocaine or something, right? I mean, that's not, it's a hormone. Mm -hmm. We have to be very careful with anything that's that, let's just say anything that powerful mm -hmm. has a potential downside too. There's not a single thing that we can take, whether it's a supplement, a medication, a, anything that works this well, that we don't also have to be very respectful and careful about. Because if it works that well, it's you got to be managed very carefully. Yeah. Well, and it's also um, connected to the fact that when we supplement estrogen and when, you know, estrogen replacement and progesterone replacement is given, it's not given in the same dose that we created when we were in our 20s. You know, it is in a more moderate conservative dose to be optimal in your late 40s and 50s. So you're basically saying the same thing with testosterone here. Yes. Yes. And you're right. Now, when we're having periods, mm -hmm. Well, goodness, when we're pregnant, even more so, our estradiol might range from 50 to 500. I mean, we make tons of estrogen and that isn't always pleasant. I mean, those of us who huh. can still remember having periods around like, oh, breast tenderness and PMS. Mm -hmm. And so these wild fluctuations of estrogen that we have in perimenopause and earlier, now that's not entirely pleasant. And so when we're menopausal, one of my favorite things about being menopausal is I get to have 
pretty stable hormones all the time. So I don't want my estrogen to be 500 mm-hmm. low. I want it to be on the lower end of where it was when I was having periods because that feels better. We don't have all those awful side effects and of high estrogen. That is like all the things, breast tenderness, water retention. Mm-hmm. And also the lower dose is enough to achieve the goal. So we want enough to alleviate the symptoms. So for estrogen, that'd be hot flashes, night sweats, vaginal dryness mm-hmm. without causing side effects. Now, in respect to testosterone, in order to alleviate the symptoms like low sex drive, muscle loss, et cetera, we are getting a little bit closer to what it was at the highest, but when we were younger, mm-hmm. and that's fine. And frankly, it's not harmful to take more estrogen either. It just creates more side effects. So it's a very, it's a very t- tight balance between getting the side effects to go away so we feel well. Right. And also not create side effects on the other side because the whole goal is to feel better, not to create 10 more problems. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yes, high, too high testosterone is why testosterone, in my opinion, has gotten a little bit of a bad name in some circles because many people were given too much and Mm. and that was a sad thing. Yeah. Can testosterone um, counterbalance or, or be helpful to the other hormones that a woman may be taking in midlife? That's a great question. You know, I I was sort of speaking to all of these hormones, none of them operate in a vacuum. I mean, none of anything in our body operates in a vacuum, right? So all of them are related. It's like a waltz and never, you know, I always say if you throw a pebble in a pond, it's like everything changes. Um, I've not seen any evidence that I haven't experienced any evidence that adding testosterone, for example, changes your estradiol level or anything of that nature. Specifically, if we're using it in a not by mouth form. Now, when we're in the old days, when things were given by mouth, the liver was so busy doing multiple things that we could see alterations and um, levels of certain other drugs we might be taking or so on. But uh, I know we'll get to roots of administration soon, but as you know, Mm -hmm. estrogen and testosterone, both we want to give not by mouth because they're tough on the liver and that, that you can get into some issues with interfering with other medications, et cetera. But when it's given across the skin, pretty much directly absorbed into our bloodstream without taking that first pass through the big washing machine of the liver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, um, and and it's interesting and we will talk about different delivery systems as well, but is, I mean, testosterone, is it FDA approved or an, or not? Yeah. It's such a good question. Yes. For men. Huh? So this is one of my favorite stories. Um, and I have so many men have last I counted 18 different FDA approved testosterone products in six different categories. Interesting. They've got a cream, they've got a gel, they've got a patch, they've got a pellet, they've got a nasal spray, and one that I can't remember, but you get the picture. All these different ones, including a pellet, it's called Testapel. You can get it from Walgreens or CVS, paid for by insurance. So that's great. And the FDA approved all of those. And that seemed like a great idea because they're like, yay, men need testosterone because otherwise they'd have all these side effects that we just mentioned. Right. And to date, we don't have an FDA approved testosterone product for women. And then the question, of course, is why? Why? It goes back to, oh, so many reasons. Well, there was an FDA in 2004, ages ago, Procter and Gamble did present the FDA with a testosterone patch for women. And they had some really good studies showing that it improved libido. And at that particular time, and this is a long time ago, granted, a lot has changed since then. uh, It was denied. And the opinion of the FDA was that the problem wasn't a big enough one that is sex drive for women to warrant this being passed which is so funny because at the exact same time, Viagra and all the other ED medicines and right. 18 types of testosterone were being approved for months. So I think it's just, it's just sort of comical when you look at it. And sometimes things in the world are kind of don't make sense. And that is in that category. Uh, so it's not that. So, so the FDA has accepted that testosterone is safe for humans, but only male humans at the current moment, even though testosterone is present in our body, all of our lives, And so it will happen. It will happen. We're just, you know, it's just time. And unfortunately in female, the world, and and not only in medicine, but everywhere else, 
we're behind and we don't get the attention and, and it's starting to change and it costs a fortune to make a drug and do the studies and present it to the FDA. It, it's just expensive and a drug company has to want to do it. And frankly, they can make more money making cholesterol medicine or diabetes medicine. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, if you follow the money, you'll get the answer as they yeah. say, somebody has to want to do it. Um, and another funny story um, is that the FDA did approve two other very nasty, awful drugs for a sex drive for premenopausal women. And both of them have a ton of side effects and they don't even work. And those are uh, Addy, which is an antidepressant. Hmm. And you have to take it every single day, even though it's only shown to have minuscule benefit better than placebo. And then another thing called by Lisi, which is an injection that you have to give yourself 45 minutes before sex. And it works on the neurotransmitters in your brain and has a whole bunch of awful other side effects. And those were only approved for premenopausal women because postmenopausal women don't matter. Because well, we don't have sex anymore. I mean, what's the deal? <laughs> so not only are they drugs that don't really work uh, with tons of side effects, but they're only approved for Premenopausal women, yet a natural hormone, which we've had all our lives, was not approved. So you, you sort of got to look at it and be like, hmm, what? Things that don't make sense, right? There's a song about that, like things that make you go, hmm. It's mm, in exactly. <laughs> so it, it, it's <laughs> happening, but it's like, good grief, like how <sighs> on earth could a natural hormone be vilified to that degree where these other drugs that act on our brain and have all kinds of side effects are, oh, those are fine. And you know, when you see an ad on TV for a drug, I love this. It's like a subtext da, 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 can cause blindness, death, heart disease, you know, stroke, et cetera, right. et cetera. Don't take Too this. Long us. Da, 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 da. <laughs> At that point, I really don't care. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this idea that we swallow that FDA approval means something is safe. Mm. We just need to think about that for a moment. Because there are yeah, good point. a million things that you could take that are FDA approved that are flat out not safe and have disclaimers as long as you're armed. Yes, that is right. And there are also things that I bet me and many of your listeners take handfuls of every day, like supplements that are mm -hmm. not FDA approved. And you have no idea what's even in there. Way more yeah. potentially harmful than a natural hormone. Mm -hmm. Yet we do that without thinking about it. So I'm not criticizing anyone and I'm not judging anyone because I do this too. But sometimes I just have to think, huh. Yeah. Hmm. Huh, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. Or maybe Things I need to open my mind sense. a bit to that mm. idea. Yeah. It's interesting, interesting conversation. And you're so right about, you know, what you said about FDA approval. And I completely see both sides of that coin. Uh, we want to talk more about testosterone on the backside of this quick commercial break so we can thank our sponsors. Let's talk about uh, different delivery systems, price points, how women get it, how they decide how much they need, you know, basically the patient doctor experience. And we mm -hmm. will delve into that conversation more with Dr. Susan when we come back. Sometimes it's good to be a skeptic, right? Especially when it comes to making purchases like supplements for your body. How do you know what's going to work? Is it worth the money? Well, let me introduce you to Ritual. Their science-backed essential for women 50 plus multivitamin is just for us. It's got high quality traceable key ingredients in clean bioavailable forms. That's it. You can take it in morning, at night. It has a wonderful minty essence in every bottle that makes taking your multis actually pretty enjoyable. Eight key nutrients in two delayed release capsules per day to make sure your body is getting exactly what it needs. They're vegan, non-GMO, project verified, gluten and major allergen free, and certified B Corp and made traceable. No more shady business. Rituals Essential for Women 50 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 25% your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash over 50. Start Ritual or add Essential for Women 50 Plus plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash over 50 for 25% off. Oh, how I love me some Jenny Kane. Boy, you talk about classic timeless pieces, perfect for the summer, effortless chic, especially for travel to be able to pack, wear on your trip. I just think it's a no brainer. California brand, easy breezy. Their quintessential sweaters are must have items. I love the new cotton collection, their foster sweater, 
Cameron crew neck. They're perfect everyday pieces. And then they've got these wonderful dresses. They've got a day dress. The Callan dress is kind of that classic vest dress that feels timeless. Comfort quality. They've got home essentials like furniture, pillows, throws, you name it. Again, it is just that no brainer effortless, chic style. I love it. And they've got an incredible rewards program where you can earn up to 10% back with every purchase and joining is free. Hey, you can find your new uniform at JennyKane.com. Our listeners get 15% off your first order when you use code Dominique15 at checkout. That's 15% off your first order, J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E.com, promo code Dominique15. Let getting dressed be one less thing you worry about. Welcome back. My guest today is a face and somebody that you know. She has been on Over 50 and Flourishing multiple times talking about women's health, hormonal health, sexual health. In midlife, it's Dr. Susan with the Complete Midlife Wellness Center. And we are talking tea today, testosterone for women, trying to dispel the myths and talk about who it's for, what supplement, supplementation means in midlife, what it looks like. It's been an interesting conversation just about testosterone in general for women and how, you know, it's all been marketed to men. And you've been, you know, talking about what testosterone depletion in women looks like in midlife. You talked about, you know, muscle loss, the lack of libido. Is there anything that we're missing in that symptom list? Those are the big ones. I'll tell you the, the biggest one. And, and I mentioned I have the symptom checker that I give all of my patients. It's really just a conversation starter. Mm-hmm. The very top one is decreased sex drive. Yeah. And I wrote this list myself. So clearly that was the order I was thinking when I wrote it, because the lack of desire is the most common. There's lots of different ways that sexual, and I'm not going to use the word dysfunction because I think that's a not a good word. Mm-hmm. Sexual change happens in our perimenopause and menopause, but the most common one is just the lack of desire. It's like, eh, I don't really want to. I'm sort of fine when I get going, but I'm not going to go after it. I'm not going to initiate. I just mm. don't, couldn't, I could take it or leave it. That, that, that desire. That feeling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Can you make it quick? Okay. All right. I guess that kind yeah. of consent rather than like, Ooh, yeah. And so, um, desire, uh, rather than arousal, which is a little mm. bit different. Now, testosterone is related somewhat to arousal, but less so than desire. And it's interesting that, um, In the medical community, those terms have been combined into desire and arousal, like they're one thing. But I can, every woman that I know knows that desire and arousal are different. I can have no desire and then I can just suck it up and my arousal will eventually get there. Mm -hmm. But it's specifically desire that testosterone affects. So that one is number one, I would say. And then you mentioned muscle conservation. Uh, So Mm -hmm. not only are we having a harder time building muscle, Maybe we're eating our protein, we're doing our strength training, and it's like, just not getting the results that I used to, right? Mm -hmm. And then if we're more sedentary, we're losing muscle even faster. So patients with the appropriate for them amount of testosterone will find that it's not only easier to hold onto the muscle that they have, but easier to build some when they do their strength training and their protein, but not to get bulky. Yes, I gained seven pounds of muscle, but I, Mm -hmm. I look good. I think I feel strong. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm right. not bulky. Goodness knows I could never be. No. Um, I look more like my arms look like when I was 30. They're not mm-hmm. little sticks with skin hanging off the bottom <laughs> like they were when I had no muscle. Right. And, and that looks good in clothes, right? But it also feels good because we were talking about being able to pick up a heavy box. Mm-hmm. And then I often think now that we're getting closer to end of life, like what do I want to be able to do when I'm 80, 90? I want to carry my box. I want to carry my own suitcase. I want to be able to walk up the stairs or get myself off the floor, or play with mm-hmm. my grandkids on, on the ground and these things that require muscle mass. So in as much as you've talked so much, and it's so wonderful to talk so much about how important muscle mass is, testosterone is is a, an important player there. Now, could you have no testosterone and still maintain your muscle mass? Yes, you mm-hmm. could, but it's harder for yeah. sure. Um, you know, many women, and I, you could tell it'll, your guests might say, well, I, I've not taken any hormones and my muscle mass is great. And yes, I, it's not black and white. It's one of the factors, right? Mm-hmm. One of the factors in the big soup of how to be well. It wouldn't mm-hmm. be accurate to say, oh, testosterone fixes everything. Of course not. It's just one of the things to consider as the yes. many things, right? 
Yeah, it's it's each woman's unique journey. And I'll, I'll throw this in just as a personal story. My mom, who, you know, everybody on listening and watching, I mean, everybody knew and adored my mother. And she was a big proponent for hormone replacement therapy. And she started back in the day when nobody knew about it or talked about it. And she was researching, you know, bioidentical hormones back before that even became a buzzword or, or a conversation. And she, I mean, it, to her final years would supplement with testosterone and would work out at the gym and would lift weights. And people would always say, you know, what do you do? What do you do? And, I, and I'm not going to say that it was just that one thing because it's not, Susan, you and I both know it's, it's a culmination of a lot of choices and decisions. Right. But I saw in her how it was benefiting her. I mean, she was independent, she was strong, and she wanted to do for herself. And so she was making choices that enabled her to do that. And that was her walk and her choice. But, you know, as a daughter, it was interesting to see my mom choosing to live life out in that way and watch her and learn from her. So I want to now talk about just different avenues and choices. So if a woman's saying, okay, you know, I'm, I'm feeling a lack of libido. I'm, my sex drive has tanked. You know, I don't want to have sex with my husband or my partner or whomever. Um, they're concerned about muscle and muscle also supports bone, which is really critical for us as we age. Yes, too. So let me jump in and yes. thank you for reminding me. Of course, those two are, uh, interrelated, they're stuck together literally yes. in our body, right? So when we have better muscle mass, it improves our bone health and testosterone independent of muscle has a positive effect on bone building along with estrogen. So all of us mm -hmm. by now know that estrogen is really helpful for preventing osteoporosis and testosterone is too. So both mm -hmm. of them in conjunction are very good for uh, reducing our risk of osteoporosis. So thank you for bringing that one up. Mm, yeah, you bet. Um, what should a woman do? I mean, you and I both know not every medical practitioner sees this, right? Or speaks to this. So what is a woman to do if she wants to advocate for her own health and at least explore and examine her options? Where should she start? How should she start? And it's very sad and frustrating that she should have to go to so much trouble. I'll just say right. that here we are. And right. I, I imagine... I mean, goodness knows what our uh, mothers and grandmothers had to do to get around things that we now find normal. You know, mm -hmm. we have access to so many things that they didn't, and they had to try so hard to get a boat or things that were just like eh, normal. Right. So yes, we're in that time of life regarding hormones where we do have to advocate for ourselves and and be you know forward thinking in order to have access to these things that are still you know somewhat on the fringe of what your typical doctor is going to think is, is normal practice. Mm -hmm. Here's a couple, I'm not going to say they're problems, but things to think through. In my experience, talking with a woman about her hormones does not take place in 15 minutes. And so it's mm -hmm. very tricky to do in a traditional ob -GYN setting or your family practice or whatever, because they have 15 minutes and, and they're just not going to be able to talk about it because it takes an hour or so. So Finding someone who has time. Well, how do we do that? Um, you know, Google and find. Uh, it's it's just a shame. And Houston, luckily, we have some great resources uh, where you can find doctors. Um, if you Google bioidentical hormone replacement, you'll come up with lots of different options. And then you'll have to do some sifting through because, as I mentioned, a lot of them, in my humble opinion, will give you way too much. Mm. So if you were go going to somebody, it would be great if you could say, "I want to get." this much. For example, I would like to get testosterone such that my levels are 50 to hundred and please mm -hmm. don't give me more than that. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind, thank you very much. Because otherwise, you know, we're going to be at the mercy of whatever their little calculator says. And I'm very critical. I'll just say openly about the so-called calculators that companies, and I don't mind naming them like BioT put out there and doctors just punch in some numbers and they might say, oh, Dominique, you need 200 milligrams of testosterone. That would be terrible. Mm -hmm. so, for example, the dose that I take now is about one third of what that calculator would suggest that I would need. Hmm. It's just too much. And, and so I would highly encourage finding a doctor that doesn't rely on a 
calculator. They need to use their mind. They need experience. They need Mm -hmm. experience. Uh, Someone who's worked in this field for a long time. And I would ask them some questions like, what is your goal for my testosterone level? And then what what is your experience with that? And uh, whatever you think might be appropriate for you to be comfortable, Mm -hmm. uh, because it's a very important conversation. Yeah, no. it's your it's your health and your safety. And I also right. want to throw out, I think we had talked about maybe in a previous podcast, menopause.org as a way to find a practitioner in your area, somebody who's specializing in this. Yeah, so the North American Menopause Society, and this is their website, um, is a great resource. And there's always a caveat to everything. I will tell you, it's a fantastic organization. Uh, there are different levels uh, that one can just pay to be a member. Mm-hmm. You can pay so much money and be a member and know nothing. And you might be listed there, or you can be what's called a practitioner and that's going to have the letter P after it. And so those of us who have that letter P at least had to take a test. There's a pretty extensive test. You you know, people with the practitioner designation, at least that you can assume they have some level of education, but we do have to be careful that anyone can be a member just to say, Mm -hmm. So let's look for a practitioner and that's a good resource. And then within that group of practitioners, there's going to be a hundred different opinions. And you want to find someone who is um, shares your point of view, because there's not a right answer and a wrong answer. There's what answer feels good for you. And you, mm-hmm. I think it's great to find a provider who supports, even if they don't share, but supports your view because you mm-hmm. are in charge of your body I'm not going to tell anyone what to do. And I'm by no means doing that today. You do you. I'm just mm-hmm. saying this is something that works for me and a lot of my patients. And so something to possibly consider. So yeah, it's tough to have to do that, isn't it? To get on Google mm-hmm. and do the searching, but um, yeah. you are worth it. Look at the reviews. Yes, yes, yes. And I- you know what? It's so funny. I kind of compare um, shopping for a midlife practitioner, um, like going to a thrift store or th- several thrift stores, you know, you got to go, you got to go. And and a lot of it'll be just meh, but then you strike gold and you find the one, you find the thing. And when you do, it is, it, it's a thrill because, you know, on one hand, yes, you, you hit gold with, you know, a piece of fashion, but on the other hand, you hit gold with your life and your wellness. And it's, it's worth the time. You know, it is worth the investment. It's worth the research because you're the only you you've got. And to your point, you know, you are worth the best care out there. And I, I can't stress enough. I mean, I've, I've fired doctors. I'm like, you're not listening to me. You're not hearing me. And and people should, you know, I'm sorry, a doctor's not God. They don't know everything. And if you're not being heard, if you're not being understood, if you're not being cared for, there are many others out there. Go find somebody who's going to listen to you. And that's to your point, you know, 15 minutes may not be enough to get the job done right. I agree with everything you just said. And to add to that, I was one of those doctors. So with no judgment, just saying they don't know this stuff. Like if you've listened to Dominique and you've listened to me and you've listened to Mary Claire Haver and you've listened to Mm -hmm. people that are educated and have devoted their life to learning about this, you know more than they do. And Mm -hmm. that's not their fault. They're busy trying to deal with insurance companies and see 40 patients a day. And they haven't read much lately because they're exhausted when they get home. In order to keep up with the science myself personally, I have to read, learn, listen to at least six hours a week, at least like an hour a day Mm -hmm. of uh, material that's directly related to my field, just to even try to stay on top of what's going on and so on. And, And that's just in this tiny field. So a menopause specialist is going to be someone hopefully who it has that degree of passion about it. Right. And yeah, you might find, kiss a few frogs and, and then move on. Right, exactly. <laughs> and, and then so it goes with every aspect of life and, and yes. with your healthcare professional too. Yes. Um, so let's, let's approach this. So now you, let's say you found somebody who you feel is a good fit for you. Um, kind of like, I guess, how it is with estrogen. For me, you know, when I see you, it's multi-pronged. It's not just my blood work, but how am I feeling? So I'm assuming the same goes, holds true for testosterone as well. For everything, Mm -hmm. right? So for absolutely everything. So I'm a, I'm a huge proponent of measuring blood levels Mm -hmm. because how on earth otherwise would we know where we're starting? We're just literally blindly throwing a dart and not even knowing what the target is. It just, to me, doesn't make any sense. 
a different school of thought, and I've heard this argued, well, we can just assume that it's zero. Well, Mm -hmm. no, not really, because it isn't always zero. So for example, mine was zero, and that's sometimes the case, but some women do have a little bit of testosterone. So we would be giving that patient less than someone who was at zero, for example. And there's so many different things. There's not two people that are the same. Um, Even if I'll hormones are all zero. We have different activity levels. We have different desires for what we want to achieve. We've got with different diets, all the things. So it, it's a really important to work with someone who understands that you are a human being. Yes. And so you're similar to others in many ways, but you're also quite unique. And, and so just assuming that hormones are zero, I think is um, mm-hmm. not always so. And then addressing it from, they start where we are. Here we are and let's start there. And then I I tell my patients, let's just think of this as an experiment with one person in it. And it's a safe experiment, which has been done by hundreds of thousands of other people. However, the results you get might not be the same as me or your friend or whomever. Just say you said, okay, Susan, let's try testosterone. Let me just see. I go into it with that exact mentality. Let's try it and see. Mm -hmm. If you try it for three months and say, eh, my libido didn't get any better. Well, then you tried it and we put it aside. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen very often, Hmm. but it does happen. And so, yes, it's listening to the patient. It's following up. It's saying, how's this working? How are we doing? Do we need to adjust it? Do we need to do it at all? Mm -hmm. um, Everybody's different. I don't put all my patients on testosterone. Some of them have no problem with their libido. They don't have the symptoms that would warrant taking it. Uh, Most of them do, but not all. So everyone's individual. Just like there are some women who can't take estrogen due to, you know, maybe cancer history or a case of cancer, or, you know, you have to measure it. Is there any woman who can't take testosterone? Yeah, really not. And a very, very small group who can't take estrogen. I mean, frankly, in my opinion, just the group who has active breast cancer right now, and then mm-hmm. it's controversial what to do later. But uh, testosterone has not been associated with any cancer, none, not in a negative way. There's some very encouraging emerging science that testosterone actually reduces the incidence of breast mm-hmm. cancer. Uh, multiple studies are now coming out suggesting that that's probably the case. So of course, we hold back a while and science and wait and see, but certainly doesn't increase it. Uh, So I'm very, I would bet lunch that in 10 years, we will know that testosterone reduces the incidence of breast cancer. Right Mm -hmm. now we're still pretty sure, but hopeful. Yeah. And so no, there is no one who shouldn't, who would be excluded from being offered trying it should she want that for herself. Right. Okay. So now, now we know, and now we're at a place where patient and doctor are together. Symptoms have been presented, blood work uh, looked over. What are the different delivery options for testosterone? Um, I mean, I know there are quite a few for estrogen. Does the same apply to testosterone? Yeah, pretty similar. You know, estrogen, of course, we've got some FDA approved options like the patch and the yeah. pill, which we don't want to take, by the way, even though it's available. Or your liver. That's yeah. a bucket of um, things that are FDA approved that are not good for you. Premarin is still FDA approved. It makes no sense that anyone would ever take that product yet. It's been shown to be dangerous and it's FDA approved. So coming back to your question, I just got a little excited about that topic. Um, (laughs) We we have some estrogen products we can get from Walgreens, like a patch and a cream. And that's wonderful. At the current moment, for the reasons we discussed, we don't have that for testosterone. So we have to get it from a compounding pharmacy, which... uh, Mm -hmm. That you have to get a really good one, let's say, because they're making it in their, you know, office as if they were a chef in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. So we get testosterone compounded by a very reputable compounder that we trust, and then we can administer it in multiple ways. And I would just exclude taking it by mouth for the reasons mm-hmm. that we mentioned, not good for the liver. So then, right. what are we left with? Well, we can use a cream, a mm-hmm. gel. We don't have a patch yet, but we've experimented taking the male patch and cutting it into ten pieces. A, that gets a little tricky. But you a little piece of the pie. A little piece of the testosterone I mean, pie. Yeah. You can the male nasal spray just doing a lower dose. I mean, so yeah. yes, you can experiment with those things. I, I tend not to do that. I uh, mm-hmm. personally, although it's not certainly could work for some people. Um, 
you know, anything not by mouth. Cream, we can get that made. A gel, we can get that made. There are things that go in your mouth, like drops under your tongue or something called a trochee, which is a little lozenge that dissolves in your cheek. These are all just ways to get it into your system without it going into your stomach. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there are pellets, which is another way. They go under your skin and it's delivered into your bloodstream that way. None of them is better or worse. They're Mm -hmm. all exactly the same stuff just a personal choice about what the convenient, most convenient or most good sounding way to you is. Right. As an example, I started using testosterone cream in my world. I couldn't remember to do it. I had to put Mm. it on twice a day and I was forgetting and leaving it at home when I went on vacation. And so for me, that did not work. It wasn't that the product was bad or the idea was bad. It's a great idea. I just can't remember to do anything twice a day. <laughs> so I'm guessing you went with the pellet. <laughs> right. So in my particular case, I was like, eh, not that one. Yep. Um, so for example, we'll just go through the choices and say, okay, in your particular lifestyle, which one of these do you think would work best for you? And a lot of my mm-hmm. patients are like, oh, I have no problem putting on a cream twice a day or that trochee, which is what we call that lozenge. Mm-hmm. That sounds good to me. Or, hey, I just can't really remember things and I'm swimming all the time or working out. So the little pellet under my skin, that might be a good choice for me. And those are all very good options. And frankly, we end up with quite similar blood levels. It's just, Mm -hmm. you know, six or one, half a dozen of the other same stuff getting in your bloodstream. Just different delivery methods. Exactly. Yeah. And the pros and cons, of course, of each. And you just sort of weigh those for you. Right. What about, I'm sure for a lot of women, maybe price will dictate which way she goes. Does price vary between these different delivery methods? Not a lot, honestly, Mm -hmm. given that they're all coming from compounding pharmacies. uh, You know, I hate that the world is this way at the moment, but so it is. uh, Mm -hmm. They're generally not covered by insurance uh, because insurance companies only pay for things that come from a standard pharmacy. So generally they're, you know, something that we have to pay out of pocket, which is super disappointing that Mm -hmm. that we're limiting this very potentially helpful treatment for those who have more resources. So write a message to your congressman Mm -hmm. about that. Yep. I am equally frustrated. Uh, So let's just say a month of testosterone cream might cost you $60. I'm just making up a number. It might vary a bit from compound or something in that general range. Right. And then a pellet, for example, that might last, um, I say three months. I I didn't want to give a specific time because it is different for different people. Mm -hmm. Say it lasts 12 to 14 weeks. That might be $150 a month. So it's a bit more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, depending on your particular point of view, is that a lot more or not a lot more? That's a personal decision. Right. Uh, Because the benefit of not having to do it every two days might be worth that extra $90 $90 a month. or So we go through all of these things. So to me, it was worth it. And you know, I'm very privileged. I have the means to pay for it. Not everybody does. I, I get it. It's not that simple. But the, the price to me of having to put it on twice a day and dry my arms and don't touch the dog and don't work out and all this, that was higher than the extra few dollars for the pellet. So these are all just pros and cons that we talk through and then find mm-hmm. what works for an individual. Yeah. Does every doctor prescribe this or no? Absolutely no. Yeah. Because of what we talked about. Yes, right. Not yeah. educated. They would tell you women don't even make testosterone. Mm-hmm. They would certainly not know that it's an important hormone for anything, let alone all the things we mentioned. They would tell you it's not FDA approved, therefore it's bad without knowing any of the history that I just told you, et cetera. And that's not wrong because they're bad people. They just look, I I don't know much about orthopedics. It's a funny thing when you're a doctor, I always like cringe when on the airplane, they're like, is there a doctor on the plane? And I'm like, I hope they deliver a baby because otherwise I don't know what on earth this poor person needs. And I do volunteer, but if somebody says, "Um, Hey, Susan, my knee hurts. Can you tell me what that is about? I'm like, absolutely not. I can't Mm -hmm. even remember the name of the muscles in the knee. No. So, so, you know, you have to be a specialist to know this stuff. Mm -hmm. I would be the wrong person to go to for your meniscus tear, right? Mm -hmm. Just because I'm a doctor. Don't know about knees. Same as your family practitioner, your internist, all of those people. And frankly, your regular gynecologist, they're just not going to know this. They're going to be fantastic to go to for all the many wonderful things that they have expertise in, Yeah, but not this. Well, and I asked you that question for a very specific reason, because I hear from women a lot 
who say, you know, my doctor never told me about this. I wasn't aware of this. I've, I tried and they didn't listen to me. And so it really speaks to your point that you have to get out there and you have to find the right person who specializes in this if you want or need to be heard in this area. Because like you said, an orthopedic doctor isn't going to be able to look at your hormones. And, and oftentimes a lot of GPs or family practitioners, they don't have the time and the bandwidth to be able to do it. So, you know, if your hormones matter, if you are in a place of depletion or need or just curiosity and want to know, I, I can't encourage women enough to seek a specialist in this area because you could get some interesting answers to some things that you might have been struggling with for a long time and suffering from for a long time, maybe needlessly. That's just the point, isn't it? Like, the, yes. this is, you've just summed up what I think the point of my job is. I, just to alleviate suffering. Can can we just feel good? Like, we mm -hmm. deserve it. Like, we're going to live hopefully a long time. And can we compress those years? We're going to all die, and that's fine. But can we compress those years where we don't feel well, or we have injuries, or we break bones, or mm -hmm. we can no longer be sexually intimate, or we can't get up off the floor, or all of these things? So that my, I tell my patients this, and I'm sort of joking, but hopefully not. We're going to live to 95 and feel fantastic, and then we're going to die in our sleep. And, that, that's and it. Happy <laughs> that's and, it. Um, and yes, of course. Let that be the prayer. <laughs> well, we cannot guarantee that, of course not. But we can set the stage to make it possible, or we can set the stage to make it impossible. So mm. if we are losing bone and losing muscle and developing fat around the middle and losing our energy and all the multitude of things, and, and we're losing sexual intimacy, because intimacy mm. is associated with longevity, by the way, mm -hmm. you're actually making that possibility impossible. We're taking it off the table. So I want to at least leave it open for possibility. And then I might get struck by lightning. Who knows what might happen? But I love the idea of making our best life at least possible and then go into it with the intention, manifesting that it can happen and feel as well as you can. Mm -hmm. And if you told me I feel fantastic already, well, no problem right. to solve. Yet mm -hmm. if you told me all the things we just said, I feel weaker. I'm losing muscle. The scale's showing I'm losing muscle. I I don't have that sex drive anymore, et cetera. Well, hey, you could feel 10% better, mm -hmm. possibly. Give it a try. Why not? What do you have to lose? I mean, mm -hmm. really, that's my question. Nothing. Great. Great question. Um, I'm going to close it out by asking you, is there anything I didn't ask you about testosterone that you want to mention? I just think you had such a thorough conversation. And as you can tell, I really love talking about it. So I, I would just be delighted to meet any of your listeners who would like to talk to me about it further because I'm quite passionate about it, given how much it helped me mm -hmm. and so many of my patients. I don't have oily skin. I don't have acne. I'm not masculine. I take the right dose, and that is right. critical. So I you guys know where to find me. We do see patients in person and remotely, you know, for patients who live in Texas, I'm licensed in Texas. Uh, also soon to be in California, more to come on that. Um, so Good. we can actually practice medicine in states where we're licensed, but we can also provide coaching and education to patients mm -hmm. who live outside of Texas. And we're not prescribing medication, but we can talk to you about it and give you mm -hmm. guidelines and information that you can take to a physician who's licensed in your state. So I think that's a a really valuable tool that we've added to our toolbox at our office that we can see people from anywhere in the world, even though we're not practicing medicine right? Um, and just talk to you about it, mm -hmm. about you, about what you need and what you could ask for to help you, to guide you, to find the right person, even if it's not me. That's great. That's great. So it's like a uh, consultation that you yeah. offer and that initial dialogue that you said a lot of doctors can't give to a patient, but you guys can, um, which I think is wonderful, Susan. So we will link all your information and how people can find you um, in the description part of the YouTube video and the podcast. And, um, I, and I hope that you're able to help as many women. I know women have so many questions about these things, you know, still, yeah. even though there are many, many conversations happening about this subject, hormones in general and midlife. And I'm grateful for these conversations. I think there's still so many misconceptions and many women who have a lot of questions or are just beginning to kind of scratch the surface and get an understanding and get some answers. So I'm grateful for women like you. I'm grateful for these conversations. I'm grateful for practitioners 
who have transitioned into the space to make women feel valued, important, and cared for. And then in the end, to me, that's what it's really all about. It really is. And thank you again for having me. It's always delightful to see you and your fantastic audience. And thank you. Just feel good. You deserve it. Yep. We all do. We all do. And it's so good to see you again, my friend and carry on, keep doing you. And uh, so grateful that, that you made time for me today and this audience. Thanks, Susan. My pleasure. Thank you for joining us on today's episode of Over 50 and Flourishing. It's always so enlightening um, just listening to Susan. And she's, you know, any any question I fire her way, she is just a wealth of knowledge. And I'm, I'm grateful for her. I'm grateful for all the women in the menopausal space, all the women who have been on this platform and who have yet to be on this platform, who we can continue this conversation with. with. I, I know the more we talk about it, the more we discuss, the more information, the more research, like Susan said, research-based information information, the better we can be at helping to guide and steer our own health along with practitioners out there who can be great advocates for us. So thank you for being with me. If you enjoy the content on Over 50 and Flourishing, please, if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe, subscribe to this channel and comment in the comments below. Tell us what you thought. Tell us uh, some ideas, direction, um, things that you would like us to cover, maybe guests that you would like to have on and to see me talk with on Over 50 and Flourishing. And of course, if you are listening on Apple and Spotify, I would most certainly love it if you would rate, review, subscribe, and share the podcast with those that you know and love. This community is budding, building, and growing, and it's all thanks to you. And I just hope you know how greatly appreciated you are. Thanks for being with me this week, and I will see you next time. Sometimes it's good to be a skeptic, right? Especially when it comes to making purchases like supplements for your body. How do you know what's going to work? Is it worth the money? Well, let me introduce you to Ritual. Their science-backed Essential for Women 50 Plus multivitamin is just for us. It's got high-quality, traceable key ingredients in clean, bioavailable forms. That's it. You can take it in morning, at night. It has a wonderful minty essence in every bottle that makes taking your multis actually pretty enjoyable. Eight key nutrients in two delayed release capsules per day to make sure your body is getting exactly what it needs. They're vegan, non-GMO, project verified, gluten and major allergen free, and certified B Corp and made traceable. No more shady business. Rituals Essential for Women 50 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 25% your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash over 50. Start Ritual or add Essential for Women 50 Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash over 50 for 25% off.